All right, Alexander, let's talk about a Syrian missile that uh, came close to striking an Israeli nuclear reactor and then Israel retaliated. And from what I'm reading, the retaliation was not very successful. I don't know. This is what I'm, I'm getting from various news outlets. What's going on here? Who launched this missile towards uh, this nuclear reactor? Was it the Syrian government? How effective was the Israeli retaliation? And what does this mean going forward? Well, well, on the question of the effectiveness of the Israeli retaliation, you are almost by definition going to get completely different accounts because the Israelis will say it was effective. The Syrians will say it wasn't. There's no means at the moment of getting independent corroboration of what actually happens. What the, the, the overall story of this is that for several years now, Syria has, uh, Israel has been carrying out uh, uh, missile strikes on Syria. Uh, not, they're not all embracing. This isn't a major Israeli aerial campaign. But every so often, the Israelis send aircraft not into Syria itself. They, they generally fly uh, either um, on, you know, in Israeli airspace or they use Lebanese airspace. And they launch long-range missiles from there into particular locations in Syria. And the Israelis always say that they're targeting Iranian bases, um, 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 Shia uh, formations uh, that are tied to Iran. They always say that sort of thing, that it's, they, they represent it as a duel between themselves and Iran. And what's been happening is that over the last few years, the Syrian air defences have been getting increasingly sophisticated and the Syrians reactivated some years ago, obviously with Russian help, um, um, S-200 missiles, these are air defence missiles that were supplied to Syria by the Soviet Union and which are actually quite old, but which do have quite long range and they've been upgraded with new radars and new systems. And they've been using these very long range missiles to try to target and shoot down some of these Israeli aircraft that operate in over Israel and Syria and which have been launching missiles upon them. And what seems to have happened, because the missile in question was an air defense missile, what seems to have happened in this, on this, in this case is that the Syrians launched one of these long-range S-200 missiles, the Americans call it a SAM-5, against an Israeli aircraft. It missed, but it hit a place very close to Demona, which is a very, very sensitive Israeli uh, nuclear facility. It's a nuclear reactor which is universally believed to have played a leading role in, in helping Israel develop its nuclear arms uh, um, um, force. So this is an extremely sensitive um, place. Now, from an Israeli point of view, this is an alarming development because it shows that, you know, the Syrians do have missiles, long range missiles, even even if in this case they were air defense missiles that can reach as far as Demona. And that means that Demona is potentially within reach of Syrian attack. And that's going to be something that the Israelis are going to be extremely worried about. Now, the question is, did the Syrians do this on purpose to highlight to the Israelis that Demona is vulnerable or was this simply chance that you know they launched this missile in that direction almost certainly targeting an Israeli aircraft it missed the aircraft but it landed where it did well I don't believe anybody launches missiles in the general direction of Demona without having some intention to give some sort of a warning and I think that is what this was all about now the Syrians do have much more advanced and sophisticated air defense missiles than the uh, S-200 missile that was used in this case. The Russians provided them with S-300 missiles, which are of an entirely different generation and level of sophistication altogether. The Russians up to now have forbidden the Syrians to use these missiles. 
But we've also been getting hints from Moscow that their patience with these Israeli strikes on Syria is starting to run out and that at some point the Syrians will be given the green light to start targeting Israeli aircraft with these far more sophisticated missiles that they have. And it could be that this missile strike near Demona is a warning to the Israelis not to push their luck further and to start scaling their operations down. A bit of a dangerous move from the Syrian government, isn't it? Or, or oh, do you think this was measured? Dangerous. Well, it is measured up to a point, but as I said, Demona is so sensitive and so important to Israel that, I mean, if, if the Syrians do this, and maybe, you know, maybe they did this with a sort of green light from the Russians, but we can never be sure because we don't know exactly what goes on in Damascus. And of course, there's also Iran involved. I mean, Iran might also, which Iran has a very close relationship with Syria, and they might be giving advice to the Syrians to do these sort of things. But it's certainly a dangerous move because the Israelis consider Demona to be an absolutely key facility. If, if it comes under serious threat, they will react strongly. I mean, for them, it is an absolute red line. OK, uh, how do you think uh, Israel's going to going to proceed forward with this? Do you think they got the message or are things just going to escalate here? Well, they could very well escalate because, of course, Israel, uh, the political situation in Israel is very fraught at the moment. There have been elections. Netanyahu is still there as prime minister, but uh, the government in Israel is very unstable. Uh, Netanyahu is a hawkish figure. He wants to show to Israelis that he's able to protect them. He's also, it must be said, as well as being hawkish, in practice, he's been very careful and very cautious to, to, to go only so far and no further, lest that does provoke a stronger reaction that he really wants. So I'm going to suggest, I'm going to guess this. Firstly, the Israelis will respond militarily to this. I mean, they will see it as a major provocation and a danger. So if this was a warning from the Syrians to the Israelis not to push their strikes on Syria too far, and perhaps from the Isra Iranians to the Israelis via the Syrians not to push their luck to, too far. The Israelis will launch their own strikes in order to tell the Syrians and possibly the Iranians also not to push their luck too far by coming too close to Demona. But the other thing I think that Netanyahu is going to do is he's going to pick up the telephone and talk to Vladimir Putin. Now, we will possibly see a readout of this uh, before very long, but, um, you know, perhaps not if it's too sensitive. But I am sure that the Israelis are now frantically calling the Russians and they're saying to the Russians, we've got to take steps to calm the situation because... Demona for us is a red line, and if the Syrians and perhaps the Iranians cross it, then there will be all hell to pay and a general war between Syria and Israel, which nobody really wants. Hmm. They're, they're not going to be calling Biden, I imagine. No, because they're not. Well, first of all, I mean, um, Biden delayed weeks before talking to Netanyahu. His relationship with Netanyahu is not very good anyway. He's not a strong personality, as we've discussed many times. And of course, he's got no leverage over either the Syrians or the Iranians. I mean, Trump would probably have been busy, you know, tweeting away and putting, you know, the, the, the shivers up people's spines, as he liked to do. But that, would have, that did have an effect. So he's not going to be talking to Biden. He's going to be talking to Putin, because Putin now is increasingly the person who holds the ring in all these various conflicts that you see around the Middle East. It's Putin the Israelis and the Syrians talk to about trying to sort out this low-level conflict that is always going on between themselves. It's Putin that the Iranians and the Saudis talk to when they need to talk and balance the conflicts that take place between them too. So it's remarkable the extent to which Putin has now become 
the diplomatic linchpin in the Middle East, something which historically it was always the Americans who were. Okay, we'll leave it there, guys. I will drop a 10% discount code down below in the description box. 10% off all merchandise at the Duran shop. Use the code REALNEWS. Take care.